Welcome to a setup tips tutorial by Brando Consulting. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a very important foundational part of Fishbowl, and that is costing. If your costs aren't set up right, the data that flows over to QuickBooks is going to be wrong, and your reports are going to be wrong, and you're going to want to pull your hair out. So, now that I messed up my hair, let's, uh, let's take a look at the costs in Fishbowl. First of all, under the materials section in parts is where you'll find your costs for each individual item. Under the details section, you'll see the standard cost. Under the inventory section, if we go to inventory, then the costing tab will see the average cost. Let's go back to the very foundation of costs altogether in Fishbowl. That's found under Accounting, Accounting, Tools, Module Options, Costing. Okay, so the file that I'm in right now is the average costing, is in the average costing method. You may be in the standard costing method or FIFO. So your costing is going to be affected by what costing method you choose. In this video, I'll, I'll do my best to cover all the costs, even though this file is in the average costing method. Okay. Back on the part screen, we saw the standard cost field right here. This field will be used if you're on the standard costing method. Another thing to consider with parts is the part type. We have inventory type, service type, labor, overhead, and all of these types of parts have costs. The particular item I just selected is an inventory type part, and I'm on the average costing method. If I'm in the average costing method, and I'm on an inventory type part, the standard cost field is totally irrelevant. Okay, it, it may be nice to have there um, for a pricing rule feature or for uh, just simple reference. But when Fishbowl is sending costs over to QuickBooks on work order fulfillment or uh, shipping an item off of a sales order, that, that field is ignored if you're on the average costing method. Of course, if you're on the standard costing method, then that field is, is looked at. Then, uh, since we're on the average costing method and we're on an inventory type part, this is the cost that Fishbowl looks at. This is the average cost right here that will be used when a shipment of that part goes to QuickBooks or this will be the cost used when you consume that part in a work order. Okay. Now, what if it's not an inventory type part? It's a service, like this coding service right here. If you consume this part in a work order, this service type part, if you consume it in a work order, Fishbowl uses that standard costing field no matter what. doesn't matter if you're an average costing FIFO or standard. Okay, the, the part types that are not inventory always use that standard costing field for work order, fulfillment, and shipment of those parts. Now you're probably asking, well, what about when we purchase? Okay, now when we purchase, that's different. When you receive something that you purchased, that just goes over to QuickBooks as the actual cost. Okay, the actual cost of that item will be debited to the asset account or the expense account that it's mapped to, and the um, payable account will be credited in that transaction. Okay, so purchasing is different. That's that's actual cost, but then Fishbowl will use the standard cost and the standard costing method 
the costing layer in the FIFO method, the next costing layer, or the average cost in the average costing method and when you're consuming and, and uh, shipping. Okay, so what if your costs are wrong and you need to update them in mass? In order to do that, go to the top left hand corner, click File, Export. Okay, so this is if your costs are wrong throughout the board and you've got to go through and fix them or if you're just starting out and you want to put costs in there uh, like the standard cost or the average cost. Well just type in cost. This works in 18.12. Otherwise, if you're on a, on a previous version, then you'll need to type in the first word. So part cost, part standard cost, vendor cost rules. These are the two you want to look at, the part cost or the part standard cost. Obviously, standard for standard um, costing method, part cost for average costing method. So I'm going to do part cost for average since this file is in the average costing method. I'll click Next. Next again, I'm just going to throw this on my desktop because I don't care. We're just doing a video, so I'll click finish. And love this new feature in Fishbowl. Would you like to open the file? Yes, I don't have to go look for it. All right, so let's pull this spreadsheet up so you can see it. And you'll see I've got part numbers average part cost and this is very useful this last part cost <clears throat> the last part cost means you've actually purchased it from a vendor before and you can just use that as your new average if you need to update it if somehow someone messed up the average cost and it's totally screwed up and you need to update it then that last part cost is is a good one so we can actually just go through and I always like to turn on filters and freeze panes, freeze panes, there we go. And we can go through smallest to largest and see, ah, crap, we got all these parts with zero cost. That's totally wrong, right? We got to fix those. So this will take some time on your part. You'll need to go through carefully, painstakingly, I'm not going to do that in the video obviously, and put in the cost for each one of those parts and then import it. In the video I'm just going to throw something in there. So we'll say equipment CC machine, that's uh, that's interesting. I probably don't have anything in stock for that. Um, Shipping, ooh, this is interesting. Shipping is not an inventory type part. Let's let's take a look at that. It's showing on the part cost. Let's uh, look at um, shipping. Being there, we go. Shipping. This is not an inventory type part. So this might be okay if we don't have a cost for this because it's not an inventory type part. This raw goods material looks more like some sort of um, category. Freight in, freight out. We may want to check some of these though just to be sure that they're the correct part type. So it looks like though I might be okay. These are, these are one-time custom work orders. So that's okay if those don't have a cost right now. I've never built them. They'll have a cost later. So I'm just deleting them off of the file. That doesn't delete it out of the system. Don't worry. I'm just saying, oh, we don't we don't need to change anything there. Power manual, that one might need a cost. So anyways, you'll go through this file. Um, click Save. And then go back to Fishbowl and import it. So I'm going to drill into one specific part so you can see one specific part change. 
we'll say, we'll use the anchor base, the ANBA, ANBA, inventory, we'll bring it up here, ANBA, ANBA is, the average cost is $4.49. We're going to say the average cost for that. Well, look, the last cost was $2.50. Somehow we messed it up. So we'll say the average cost should really be um, $3.50. And then just to speed up the import, I'll go ahead and delete everything else. So we're just updating that one item. We'll click Save. File, import, go to the part cost, click next, browse to it, put it on the desktop so I could find it easy. And it's the part cost, there it is. Open that up, finish, import success, and I'll click refresh, notice. So watch it while I click refresh, boom, there we go. Now, you're probably wondering, whoa, that was a big adjustment. There were a lot of quantity in stock. What's that going to do to QuickBooks? It's going to update QuickBooks. So be careful. Um, if you're making a lot of adjustments, probably the best thing to do before you do something like that is export everything to QuickBooks. And then after hours, while no one's working on it, do the cost adjustment. And then if you have like a thousand cost of adjustments, mark them all as posted. Mark them all as posted. And then um, you won't get a thousand adjustments going over to QuickBooks. If you want them to go over, go, go ahead and do it. But you can always just do one adjustment in QuickBooks to make it match Fishbowl. So let me show you where you can match that over under reports. Inventory Valuation Summary, I'll just type in Val, Inventory Valuation Summary, I'll go to the last page, and we want this grand total right here, 1.354 million, to match what's in QuickBooks. We'll pull QuickBooks over here. And we've got this sample file that we're connected to, and we see that the Fishbowl Inventory Asset Account is way different than what we've got. I've never really tried to reconcile this. I think I'm going to uh, reconcile Fishbowl and QuickBooks in another video. That'd be a great exercise to do. I know that's a big need out there. Um, but yeah, we'll want to do a journal entry right here to match that up or a journal entry on each individual sub account to match up what we need in um, in fishbowl with this so once we export that to quickbooks that will update the adjustment that we made you can actually see quickbooks adjusting as it's going You'll see the adjustments already made as this export is going, that inventory adjustment. Pretty awesome. Let's go see what account that part is mapped to. And it is mapped to Fishbowl Inventory Asset Materials Inventory. So that's where we're going to see that adjustment in that account. Materials Inventory. There we go. We'll run a quick report on Materials Inventory. We'll change the date to today. And 1 for 2019. 1 for 2019. There's our journal entry, I believe. Well, COGS adjustment for part ANBA anchor base. Yep, brought our inventory down 19,000 because we adjusted it from 4. 49 to 350 or something like that and there was thousands of parts so all right well hope this gave you some new ideas and some ways to think about 
adjusting costs in Fishbowl and the importance of getting the costs right in Fishbowl. Remember, if you're in standard costing, it's the standard cost field. If you're in average costing, it's the average cost that is created from receiving or manufacturing. You don't have too much control over that. Uh, if you're in FIFO, that's a little unforgiving because adjusting a FIFO cost means you actually have to cycle count it out and cycle count the costing layers back in. That example that I just showed you of importing costs does not work if you're in FIFO. Don't forget to comment below. Let me know if you have any other video suggestions and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos coming out.